Right, welcome ladies and gentlemen. A long time ago it was announced that we'd be getting a Bioshock movie. Long been in the works and a lot of people were really excited by this. Then it was announced it was going to be on Netflix and then the excitement kind of dwindled because Netflix largely doesn't have a great track record with properties. Uh, they tend to buy in, or they did anyway, they had bought into a lot of the sort of DEI, ESG uh, mechanisms of getting funding and then obviously that subsequently follows through into their filmmaking process. Now we've got an update. Uh, interestingly, very, very interestingly, Bioshock film adaptation still in the works. However, it has a scaled down budget and it's more personal as a movie. And this is from the producer Roy Lee. I didn't know Roy Lee was a producer on this. Uh, Roy Lee is an interesting chap. Uh, I've actually spoken to him uh, in the past because he, you know, is on board as a producer for the Hellraiser TV series. That's not actually nothing's happened with that yet. But this is interesting. I didn't. I wasn't aware Roy Lee was on board with this. So, yeah, scaled down, more personal. You kind of expect that to be the case anyway. Bioshock doesn't have to like as long as you get Rapture correct which should be personal because it should be from a, a singular perspective and and it should be quite desolate you know you could have like some shots of rapture in its heyday and then go to it just being this empty husk of a place you can do that quite cheaply it doesn't have to be a, a huge grand budget and we know it can be done quite cheaply because Godzilla minus one was done for really cheap so we'll take a look at this Hit subscribe if you're new here, and turn the bell notifications on. But let's go, right? Um, again, wasn't I wasn't really expecting any updates on this for a while. But here we go. Here we have an update. So, as a bit of a background, Variety uh, always sort of does this. But the Netflix's film adaptation of the seminal video game Bioshock with director Francis Lawrence is being, quote, reconfigured. Hmm. Now, is this a case of Netflix shrinking the budget or Roy Lee shrinking the budget? Because we do know that streamers are cutting their budgets now. Apple recently revealed how much they spend and they're like, here, yeah, we're not going to do that anymore. Like a lot of streamers are overspending. Um, but anyway, so it's going to be more personal uh, and it will have a reduced budget. So producer Roy Lee revealed on Thursday during a panel at SDCC. So the adaptation was first announced in February of 2022 as a partnership between Netflix and the game's producers, which is 2K and Take-Two Interactive, and they have kind of swallowed the woke pill, unfortunately. So the first Bioshock game released in 2007 is set in a vast underwater city called Rapture, created in the desire to foster a utopia, but instead has fallen into chaos and violence. It's a great game. It's an absolutely amazing game. Uh, I mean, just the, sort of the steampunk aesthetic... It's such a cool game. Like, yeah, they nailed it. It's so, so good. It's beautifully made. Uh, and it really was, I think, at the time when it came out. I think it was quite groundbreaking. Anyway. So the game's twist-filled narrative and vibrant philosophical worldview captured gamers' imagination. The sequels followed in 2010 and 2013. And the series has sold more than 39 million copies worldwide, and rightly so. I do think that they dropped the ball with the series, though. You know, you left such a cool place and then went to other places. Is that what? I mean, I understand it. They were trying to expand the world. But Rapture, I think, was the... the it was just so bloody cool. So anyway, since the announcement, however, Dan Lin replaced Scott Stuber as Netflix's film chief, and Lin has refocused the streamer's movie strategy to a more relatively modest approach from Stuber's mandate of expansive spending on a prolific film slate. So this, is what, this is what I was talking about, reduced budgets. Uh, but it's good that it's at least from Netflix. You know what? This is good that it's from Netflix's side, and the reason why... So if it was from the producer's side of things, then it shows that the producers necessarily didn't have a... Uh, confidence in the film so they were like oh yeah we need to scale this back we, we've agreed to it we've got the financing but let's scale it back from the distributors perspective 
them scaling it back is different. I think that signifies a much more optimistic outlook. So anyway, Roy Lee said this, the new regime has lowered the budget, Lee said. So we're doing a much smaller version. It's going to be a more personal point of view as opposed to a grander, big project. Uh, Lawrence is still attached to direct, by the way. I think this is fine. Like, I just, you know, would a... Would a Bioshock movie benefit from a $200 million budget? Yeah, of course it would. Like, absolutely, of course it would. You know, showing the the sort of hallways of Rapture in their heyday, all beautifully art decoed out, just staggeringly, just incredible architecture that they designed for that game. Everything, the visual design language is great. Would it benefit from that? Yeah. But I also, I really do think that a scaled down budget in, you know, for Bioshock, I think actually could be really, really good. Because then you've, I, I think too, too, too often now, filmmakers have relied on high and heavy budgets. And you don't, it doesn't necessarily create quality, you know. A filmmaker being given a small budget and still agreeing to jump on board is a sign of a filmmaker being, a, you know, that film being a true passion project, and they sort of have to fight through adversity to, to get the very best product out there. You know, someone that just goes, yeah, I'll get $200 million, I'll sign on to that, why not? That's easy. That's an easy film for people. And then I think that's why people get so lazy with their filmmaking at that point, because they don't really care. They're there for a payday. Someone, on, someone is on board to make a Bioshock movie for like $80 million, for instance, maybe even less. You know, you're there as a passion project. You're going to do your very best to make that look great. And you can look... This can be made to look really, really good with a small budget. Absolutely it can. Uh, so Lee was participating in Collider's Producers on Producers panel, joined by Lorenzo de Bonaventura and Akiva Goldsman. Uh, moderator Stephen Weintrop. Lee also said that Netflix has shifted its compensation strategy to a more traditional model of bonuses tied to viewership numbers. That's interesting. Rather than buyouts of prospective back-end profits. He said he'd just received a new contract for a new project with a streamer. He says the following. They're changing it to be a metric similar to box office bonuses. It's a chart. It's this amount of views. You get this amount of compensation in terms of increased back-end. It motivates the producers to actually do a movie that gets a bigger audience. I mean, who fucking Ray? Like, genuinely, who Ray? That's that's good. That's a really good thing. So what do you guys think of this? I'd love to hear your thoughts. I don't think this is anything to be concerned by. I mean, Netflix is the bigger flag, obviously. But maybe, maybe they'll surprise us and make something good. So drop your thoughts down below. If you're new here, do hit subscribe. Uh, because I get demonetized, you want to support the channel, please do. Uh, check out my Patreon. You can subscribe there as well for as little as $2 a month. That's linked down below. Cheers, guys. Take care. Bye-bye now.